Okay, mark your two by two treated lumber board at exactly two feet. This will allow us to have enough room to walk behind our uh, vertical trellis in order to uh, pick fruit. And it will also keep the fruit from rotting on the side of our barn. Cut both ends of your two by two treated lumber at a 45 degree angle for the bottom bracket. And then we're going to cut the top piece at a 45 degree angle. What kind of well. conduit are we using for our trellis? Standard galvanized, galvanized conduit, the electrical conduit. Okay, so galvanized conduit. Okay, so let's go ahead and measure for our holes and let's, let's drill our holes. You'll want to come in two inches from the end of your top bracket and we're going to just make an X mark here where our center of our holes are going to be. We want to leave plenty of room out here for any kind of splitting. Okay, here we are just bracing with a, another piece of wood here, so we don't, uh, so we get a nice catch here. Be sure to keep your drill straight. This might take a second person. So these boards aren't very wide, and you got to really hit it. There you go. See, I'm kind of holding it and guiding it for him. Now you just want to turn these over before you break completely through. And you can see there's still the little holes from the paddle here. And that's your center line. Make sure you break, break through with the holes first. And this will keep them from splintering. We just drilled it with our one inch bit. And we're just going to slip it in. And as you can see, that fits perfectly. So we got a little visitor. We got a dove. She came in to, uh, <laughs> she's landed. We can't get her out of the garage. So we want to cut our yeah. one by six back plate to 21 and a half inches long. And you want to cut two. And we've just used galvanized deck screws. Okay, now we just want to screw our brackets together. Everything should fit with our 45 degree angle on our back plate without a problem. Now we've finished both brackets. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is figure our placement oh. of our vertical garden. As you can see, this side of the barn is shaded and this side of the barn gets most of the sunlight. So we're going to go with this side of the barn and we're going to um, place our vertical garden brackets up about five and a half feet up to fit our uh, net. Now we've just screwed our brackets into the side of the barn and we're going to level this off for the next bracket. We're going to pre-drill first. You know, you just want to weave your netting, whether it be nylon or plastic. You just want to weave this on to your galvanized half inch rod. Now we're going to take and secure this by wrapping the end around our post like this and with some fishing line. Some composted cow manure sorghum peat moss and we have some organic topsoil and what we're going to do here now is we're going to make we're going to take some treated lumber two by tens and we're going to make ourselves a, a raised garden bed and we're going to blend all this together and we're going to add that in with a little bit of fertilizer and then we're going to go and shop for plants so let's get started come on Once you've taken a shovel and turned this dirt over several times, you just want to rake it smooth. 
and it's ready to plant. This project is actually going to go on the bottom of our net. It's going to help hold our net down on our vertical garden. And we're going to drill holes in this water pipe. This is a water pipe. It is made for actual water, so it is organic. I mean, it won't hurt the plants. I mean, you're not going to put chemicals in your plants, even with these glues. This is all made for water, water pipes on your home. And then he's going to put the end of it here on here like this. We'll put the leader hose on. We'll attach the other hose here and then we're going to drill holes into our pipe at different intervals like this and then a couple straight down and this is going to be our new soaker ho uh, hose so you need several pieces uh, to glue it together you've got to have uh, the solution and, and the bonding agent that bonds the uh, gives pipe you a nice together. idea that you've actually covered uh, the area it kind of is a softener to the pipe you can go ahead and Make sure that it's all coated really nice, just like that. It has a, a really strong odor. Mm -hmm. Let it dry just a minute. And that's the primer. That's your purple primer. And that's what it's called, purple primer. Yeah. Then you take this. Which oh, that is, does have a little bit of an odor to it. Uh, okay. Also, uh, you probably ought to be out in the open or someplace. You just put that around the edge here. Okay. Make sure you cover everything. Put it around the edge here. I'm going to double dip this portion here and it'll probably stay but give it a little bit of tap hold it in the plate and then wipe it off the end of it so okay a little plumber's tape on it oh yeah on the on the um on the, on the screws yeah the screw end it keeps your threads and also allows for a tighter seal that you won't get like uh, squirting yeah. two different devices Really, it, it, it's going to be tight enough with the plumber's tape if you just kind of turn it with your hand there. Now you can't even see the plumber's tape. Mm -hmm. That's got a nice, good seat. And you got all of this at the local hardware store? Local hardware store. Uh, make it all purple. And that gives you a nice purple. And then, of course, where he's going to do the end of the pipe as well pretty strong as far as the smell. The glue's a lot stronger than this stuff. Like I said, you don't have to use this for electrical when you do electrical work, but you do need it for the for the water pipes. For the water pipe. Let it dry just a minute. When it looks a little bit dry. We're ready to put on the other it's dry. An abundance of it. So he's just adding some more plumber's tape onto the end of the, the leader hose. This has a quick oh, yeah. release. There we go. That's going to be it. And there's our irrigation system for our new vertical garden. Okay, so now for the next job on the soaker hose, we just have to drill the hole. So what we're going to do is we're going to use an eighth inch drill bit. And we're going to use our cordless drill. So we'll go ahead and let John put the bed in here. Okay. And what we're going to do here is we're going to line this right here is going to be on the top. Our shutoff valve is going to be on the top of the uh, planter box. And this is going to get bracketed onto the actual 2x10s on both ends. So now what we're going to do, so since we know that this is our top, we're going to go ahead and start drilling our holes opposite of each other at an angle. Okay, so here we're just going to take our measurement. Our pipe was 10 feet, and we're going to come in and we're going to mark it um, 4 inches in for our first hole. Okay, so go ahead and mark us at 4 inches. Okay, and we're going to put a hole every 4 inches. So that's 8, and 12, and etc. And run holes opposite of each other like this, all the way down the pole and this being our center line between the two. 
This will bring our water up and kind of over into the plants that are in front and behind the trellis. Now you can always put more holes in it. <laughs> yeah, you can put more as many holes in it as you need, but we're going to start with this and see how it works. Okay, so we've just brought this over to the herb garden and we're just going to test it because it's closest to the to the house spigot. So you ready? Okay, I'm going to go turn this on. Okay, got a good thing. Go ahead and turn her on. Oh. Go ahead and sit it down level if you can. That's as high as it goes. Are we in trouble? Does our theory not work? It's dripping, but it isn't coming out hardly at all. Where's the pressure? Like a, like a sprinkler pressure. Something's wrong. Okay, so we're wondering why our water pressure wasn't working on our new vertical garden pipe. Uh, this is why. They are flushing the hydrants today, the city. Now we're just going to nail our net down on the side of our board with some um, staples. And then we're just gonna weave this into the bottom section and then we're gonna attach this to both Ooh, ends of our box. Get a screw and just... You definitely wanna have one person looking at it so you get it straight. And we've got the on and off uh, switch off valve here, and we're just going to turn that on. Whoa, there you go. <laughs> and there's our watering system. Let's let it come on. You can see where it's dripping here really well here in the bottom. We'll let it come up to pressure. There we go. And there we go. And this should keep our, um, our vertical garden very well watered. Easy way of doing it, wouldn't you say? What do yeah. you think? <laughs> Ingenious, huh? Mm -hmm. And you know, this also holds this net in place. You know, it holds this net in, in uh, position for the winds and stuff. We get a lot of winds out here. I mean, 40, 50, 60 mile per hour winds are not uncommon um, at, our, at our place here. As you can see, this just goes for miles how flat this is so we do get a lot of wind so there you go there's your basic vertical garden or fills up a little bit and then we can put some more shaded plants here and we can put some plants that like uh, more sun here so we can put some carrots and some stuff put cabbages and maybe some green peppers in the front there you go and this is how we're going to irrigate our new vertical garden now let me tell you a little bit about vertical gardening. There's less pest because things grow up, there's less pest. There's less space, less room you're using up for your garden. That means less weeds. Uh, you got a really nice compost soil mix here that we've added. That would be great for the plants. The tomatoes are gonna love this. And I think we're gonna do some heirloom tomatoes, maybe some early girl tomatoes, they vine. Any type of vining tomato, a cherry tomato vines, most varieties. Um, cucumbers, vine, of course, your watermelons, your squashes, and you know, you can even grow flowers up this. So you can get like some clematis or some um, trumpet vine, and uh, you can do a whole wall of this. Okay, today is planting time for our vertical garden, and we're going to get started by adding our vining plants first. Okay, and then the front section of this in the back section, we're going to fill in with carrots and lettuce and cabbage heads. So let's grab a shovel and let's get started. This is Chef Janie Pendleton reminding you 
that the kitchen starts outdoors with our gardens and our fruits and our vegetables and our herbs.